Okay, um, your latest album, Waking Up Dead, came out earlier this year. Um, you've obviously been working on it for quite a while, because I think it's about two years since the first song came out. Yeah. Uh, so, is it two years since you started it, or is it longer? Yeah, um, actually I think about what's funny about that is I understand now why people talk about how long it takes to make albums. It isn't that it took that long to make, it's just that we're on tour so much that there isn't a lot of time to <laughs> finish and make it. <clears throat> you know, you lay, lay down some guitars and drums, then go down and do some vocals after this tour, then after the next tour we'll do... So, it was nice to not have the pressure of like, we need this done by this date, we could take our time and get it done. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, because I, I can imagine that's quite difficult when, yeah, and it's quite frustrating. You've got, you've got those songs written and you think, great, yeah, we can release these. Uh, oh wait, we need to book that time in and then do this and... Yeah, but it's going to come out in a year's time. I would say like the silver lining in that, well, kind of actually the, the blessing and beauty of it is that you're so busy you could take a break from it for a moment. Yeah. Because, you know, it's your passion, you love it, you're, but you're so inside the box and attached to it to take that break to go tour and play the other songs and just feel the energy of what the band is. You come back to it with a fresh set of ears, a fresh mind, and, you know, you can kind of like reassess it, yeah. And hopefully you think, yeah, they're still brilliant, or come back and say, well, actually, this tweak that bit yeah, yeah. <laughs> some of that, <laughs> yeah. of that yeah or dear god did I really write that <laughs> yeah a lot of times it's actually the opposite sometimes in, I think in bands and groups and albums you love it so much you smother it so I think sometimes it's like do too much and it's almost like dressing up which I love to dress up I don't know if you noticed <laughs> but you know you put too many things on it they always say the rule is to take the last two things off before you go out, you would know this, come on, son. <laughs> so my whole thing is like, we go back in and go, okay, maybe we took that one too far, let's take a couple things back, keep it raw to the life thing, you know. Yeah, because you do hear some albums, and it's been so kind of over-polished and produced that they've lost that, the edge, that real the life vibe. edge, yeah. Yeah. You know, whereas your album, it sounds like you do on stage, you know, it's got that live yeah, kind of yeah. raw energy. And know? actually what helps keep that together, because Zach records a lot of like the vocals with me, like, oh, we do it by ourselves. And it's kind of nice because he's a good gauge for me, like to keep me roped in or to, you're not pushing hard enough or that's too much. And he kind of is a, a good sounding board for me to keep it, keep it rural. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, Gene. And when it comes to the writing, do you tend to write on the road or between, <clears throat> between touring? I mean, honestly, a lot of that stuff is just when it happens. I think we're so ahead of, or trying to be, for ourselves anyway, ahead of, the, like, the next album's already almost done. Like, they, we're about to finish that. So we try to stay ahead about a half album per album. So that way that pressure of, we gotta write, you gotta write, because that's when it doesn't yeah. really feel as organic, I guess. So as we go, we'll, like, have a few drinks and he'll say a funny line or I'll say something or one of us and we'll go, write it down, write it down. Yeah. And then if, if these things just kind of happen and then we listen back to the album, like this one that will be done very soon, we listen to it and it has everything to do with our touring life. Like it's personal stories like, oh, remember that? You know, and the mindset things, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You take some time. <laughs> and yeah, obviously there's a very sort of good time, sort of party kind of feel to the music. Yeah. Is this something you kind of set out about, this is what we're aiming for with the album, or do you just kind of write what what you feel like at the time? And Well, I, I know that for the for the current album, it seems like probably just writing about how you felt, huh? <laughs> the next one is definitely, it's a mixed bag probably, of a little bit is like, let, we know what Bullets and Octane is, we're gonna write well, it's not in songs, but we also try to depart. I mean, every album ever has had had changes in it, and you know, there's always evolution. The next album's different too, and you know, there's 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 I think there's some intimate songs on Waking Up Dead, and you know, maybe maybe the ones we play live mostly are the party ones, and those are the ones that people hear a but lot. But even like the Fuck You song, there's some really vulnerable moments in yeah. that. I think that's like the mix, right? You know, it's like you add in your personal life experiences that are a little bit difficult, but then also keeping in mind that. You know, we, we care, we, we, when we travel, we're very much alone and like by ourselves, the thing that excites us is the two hours before the show, maybe the hour or so after of just talking to the friends and fans you've developed over the many years. As dumb as that sounds, it sounds very cliche, I get it, but <clears throat> that's the thing that actually keeps you alive. Not much money in the business, not much anything, but the one thing that's great are these people going, oh my God, that song, I grew up on it, or I, yeah. I taught my kid this song, or here's my new wife, or here's my new husband. 
and they have experiences and stories to it. So I think when writing, there's a little bit of here's what I'm going through. I know they might relate. If not, I get it out. But also, we're a rock band, and those people really enjoy just enjoying hearing you say fuck you once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. and I imagine you get quite a nice ad adrenaline boost when you go out on stage and you see see all those people there. Uh, that's, uh, that's great. <laughs> that's the payoff. That's, that's 45 payoff. minutes of the other 23 hours and 20. I'm bad at math. That's it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, makes all the sort of lugging all the gear, loading the van, unloading the van, all that stuff worth it. Why did you bring that up? Right? Yeah, why did you do it? We're on high right now. We're just on stage and you're trying to just bring us down. Jesus Christ. But you heard Somebody give me the bottle of whiskey already. Yeah, it's, 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 okay. it's okay. It's it's always a drummer that's got the worst job. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he's the one with all oh, the big gear. Yeah. Don't worry about it. We know. Yeah. yeah. The drummer's got 300 boxes and the singer goes, well, I've got a microphone here. There you go. That's loaded. <laughs> yeah, what's the next question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Chris, you've been doing quite a long tour, haven't you, of Europe and the UK now? It's we're, about four. Five, we're four weeks in now, we've got another week left. Yeah. yeah. We've somehow got to get back to Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. It's been different. Um, it's been a while since I've done a long one like this. It's yeah. The longest one we've done is this group for sure. Yep. Yeah, how, how are you coping with all the, the traveling and yeah. Exhausted. I mean, I don't know. I'll speak for myself. I've done this a long ass time to where I don't know. You go to autopilot, man. You know, and you just, you just those hours that you're not doing your job. I just kind of try to stay quiet, save my voice, save my breath, drink water when I can, sleep when I can. I think we're all just, you know, we know that what matters. And every time, no matter how much we have a hard time sleeping or arguing or fighting or whatever, normal people do. I don't care to say it. it's fucking truth. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we fucking, when it's go time, we all look at each other on stage or off stage, as you can see sometimes with us, and it's like, yeah, like, you know, we're, you know, it's a family. Yeah. 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 Like, it's, it's important to value your, uh, to value each other's alone time, I think is a big one. Agreed. Yeah. Absolutely. I like to do things like today we got here and was like, hey, I'm going to, I'll be back. Where are you going? That's cool. I'll be back. 45 yeah. minutes, I'll be back. Yeah. Took a little walk around the market. Yeah. Got myself some falafel. You know, it's nice. That's the moments that kind of refresh you. Because yeah. you're stuck in a van, you're stuck mm -hmm. in a hotel, you're sharing a hotel room sometimes. Just, we pretty much, him and I are like this. Most of the time. And, you know, when we, when we get back home, we're, it's more of the same. We don't, yeah. we don't go back to our everyday lives. We don't have everyday lives. This is our life. So yeah. it's, you know, you have to learn to respect each other's music. boundaries yeah, for sure. That's a big, I think that's it. I mean, yeah. If you can do that, you're fine. <laughs> and also not take things too personally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We and, talk a lot. And do you get much time to sort of, you know, have a look around the place of where you're visiting? <laughs> it's not a it? I, I tried to. I tried to. We were in uh, Liverpool yesterday. We went to the Cavern Club because, you know, got to do it the first time there. And, yeah. But not always, no. Most of the time, no. Yeah. Sometimes you can sneak an hour in here and there. Yeah. Yeah. I always think of that. People always go, how does Italy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like downtown LA. You know, they, they always zone the venues in usually the rough neighborhoods. Yeah. Ish, you know, so you never really, um, you, don't, I don't, you don't get to see the you, fucking You see, you see the hotel, and the hotel, the venue, yeah. and yeah. maybe a takeaway or something to get yeah. some food. Yeah. <laughs> you nailed it. The, you uh, yeah. yeah. kebab shop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Because yeah. like, oh. after a gig, the only place open is a kebab shop or a fried chicken place. Why or, are you yeah. trying to buy my salad? We were just we were just having so much fun. You're right. Tonight will be kebabs yeah. and rainy weather. Yeah. Thank yeah. God for and, whiskey. And coming from LA, so how are you finding things like the cold weather in Sweden? I, well, I was raised in the cold weather of St. Louis, Missouri, but okay, so, yeah. I, but I'm also used to touring. I just always know. This is going to be terrifyingly terrible. It's going to be cold in the van, cold in the, you know, then water. Is there a thing that, reason why people don't like using fucking hot water over here? Can we talk about this? Yeah. And here's the real interview, all right? Let's get this, yeah, you're, why are you laughing? You, you, you turn on the hot water, water faucet and ice cold water comes out. Dude, what is that? When you're at the end of your shit, you're filthy, you're tired, and all you want is just some warm water, you turn it on, you go, and I go, I'm going to fucking kill a motherfucker. <laughs> That's all I wanted. It's some more water. <laughs> no, yeah. oh, no, yeah. You get used to it. You get used to it. Oh, and there's some places where you press the hot water tap and you get boiling water instead. Yeah, yeah that happened yesterday, actually. Yeah. Uh, when in London. <laughs> 
Yeah. What are you doing? What are you taking notes about? Man, fucking therapist over there. Uh, <laughs> Gene so Simmons. Yeah. 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 So you're going absolutely crazy, guys. <laughs> you're just typing it all. No, I'm just adding to yeah. the interview. Hi. Yeah. Oh, she's and just writing down, and we have to like, all right, edit at four minutes. Yes. <laughs> edit at five minutes. Swear the next one. We'll get it right. Yeah. Most most singers seem to love the spotlight. You, on the other hand, spend so little time on the stage tonight. You're yeah, like, hey, there's an audience. A dog bout. Dump. Yeah, that's actually that. my mistake. <laughs> uh, I suggested that Gene get a wireless microphone, and so I'm sorry. <laughs> it is your mistake. <laughs> no, I think what it is, like, I, I think I know where you're going with this, is that especially like playing new crowds, you know, if so once again, as usual, like before, it's like now we're playing in front of other people's fans, people who don't know us yeah. necessarily. And I think it just seems so typical rock band to be the guy up front, like, look how great I look in the lights. So I go out, I hug everybody, and just go, hey, you know, just a little mm. bit of like a little bit yeah. of a personal one-on-one -on -one thing. And it, I noticed it just breaks down the walls. You only have 30 minutes to kind of win over people that don't know you whatsoever. So to kind of go out there, and I think I knocked down about half the time of the set by going, hey, relax, come on, come on, come on. I know the words, neither do I, just yell, we give a <laughs> shit, you know? And I think it, it helps to where by the end of the 30 minutes, we all feel like we all came to have a good time and let loose and forget about our problems. Have a good night, you know? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of bringing the small club element to the big venue, yeah. you know, because Bullets Not Tan is a club band by sound, sonically, right? But right. not that it, do, it doesn't compete, I guess, or hold up in a bigger venue. It's a raw rock But, band. you know, <laughs> I, I grew up playing that punk stuff where you were the you had the microphone and six inches in front of your microphone was a person's face because you were your stage yeah. was six inches off the ground. Mm. And so, you know, that atmosphere, I think, is so much more um, provocative yep. for people, for fans. It, it, it turns people on more, right? So uh, I think right. there's value in that, and that's what we try to do. Part of the family. You know, and then I'll, I'll, yeah. I stay on stage and hold down the fort. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I think it worked really well because you're there, instead of being people watching you from a distance, they're in a circle around you, you know, yeah. You know, with the phones lighting you up, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it, it gets it gets them more involved. Yeah. It does. Yeah. I think it, and I think that's that, that's separate. If, okay, if you're that bigger giant band or whatever, a just bigger band, you can have that separation. But they already know the material and yes, yeah. to where they feel connected. They don't know you, and you have that barrier. You have eight to ten feet ahead of you, and all these lights and stuff. There is absolutely zero eye and eye. Like, hey man, we're all here to fucking yeah. just have a great time. So I think getting out there, I love like walking up behind people and going, how are you doing? And they're talking to their mate on their phone and they look over and going, ah! And they're like, oh shit, what the fuck is this guy doing? That's a crazy guy. Next thing you know, they're over there going like, they're paying attention. Because it doesn't make sense. They don't They don't understand how, f they don't relate Matt, to that yeah. guy. They don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, they've come to see one band. Yeah. They don't necessarily know the other two bands on the bill. Mm -hmm. And if you can make an impression and yeah, yeah win some of them over. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. I'll let you do it. <laughs> you should save that answer. That's it. You just yeah. answered it for us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, said that. Answers, yeah. It, really, it really is about that connection. And if I might add, with your questions or not, I'll just say the importantness of like what, why we're doing this again. Yeah. Some of the stuff you ask, this might answer it better for later. I don't know. Yeah. But right. what this whole thing comes down to for me at this age and doing it this long. Yeah is it's the same thing I told these guys. I'm not gonna, I, I wanna do this this time around because it feels good to do it. And I think that a lot of times in earlier days, you get caught up in the business side of it. You get lost in trying to be this thing, be this thing. What do we do? And it, it, you could smell the desperation on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I think it's actually kind of like, for me, I, it just feels great to sing and just look up at the lights and like feel this energy. Like I need that, as, as dumb as that sounds. That's the only thing that's going on well in my life is to feel this like surrounded energy of like uh, in the moment, like it, nothing else an hour now, from, you know, from then would matter or the hours before that moment is the thing that got me to keep doing this for about 25, 30 years of my life is that small moment where you just feel everybody's excited. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's smiling. Everyone's enjoying the moment. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. We done with this? Yeah. No. <laughs> um, it, it makes sense because, as you said, there's not much money in the business anymore. Mm. So if you're not enjoying what you're doing, yeah. you're in the wrong job. That's, <laughs> what, we, that's what we tell them. Yeah. That's yeah. all we got. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yeah. Enjoyment and alcohol. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah. 
Uh, it's good that you enjoy, and you can always tell actually when you're watching a band. Yeah, you know, yeah, those guys <coughs> enjoy what they do. Other bands just like they're going through the motions. And Agreed. Yeah, many years, many years. When when the band's got the the enthusiasm on stage and they're enjoying what they do, that comes across to the crowd and they enjoy it more. I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things, man. It, I, I think that that is the most contagious and un questionable thing like even if you're not even the best sounding band like so we have, we have all kinds of raw and wacky weird nights where it's not exactly sounding perfect but the, the most important thing about going to a rock and roll show is the fact that it is like watching somebody just let loose and do it the freedom of that that's contagious that's what it's about i've seen plenty of bands that are perfect live and it just doesn't have you know what I mean? Like it, it yeah. feels a bit dull, or it feels a bit yes, yeah. contrived, or practiced, or rehearsed, and things. I love giving people like a moment just to fuck with them. To, you know, <laughs> you know, fuck them up. Yeah, yeah, they don't forget that shit. I swear to God, no. A phrase that gets used a lot that I see about us is controlled chaos. Controlled chaos. So you know. With me being the open chaos. It's just a thing that... Open? Right. I, I wouldn't use the word controlled. It's like a lot of feeling like, like the, the train is like almost <laughs> falling off the tracks. <laughs> almost? <laughs> but oh, then it fell back yeah. on. And then it tipped back over the other But that's it. But, yeah. but then the train's sort of tipping over so, and it's just about sitting on. It's that, you know, the thrill of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's uh, a good example. I know we're done. you got to go. On the ferry from France to something... There was our tour, our, our tour, a merch guy. He got really uh, sick. It was Liverpool to Dublin. That's important. <laughs> he got real sick and was vomiting because the boat was real fucked. And I'm up there going, ah, the waves, this is fun. And I realized that that's the live show. Some might be sick by it, <laughs> but others might really enjoy the, the thrill of it. <laughs> yeah. Are you getting more? Are you good? No, that's it. That's great. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Thank you, sir.